you know, people talk about the 1%. Oh, 1% has a much higher fraction of total income, total GDP, if you like, now than it had, uh, say, in the 60s. Uh, there's um, data are hard to measure. You could mention all those things. It comes from the tax rolls, and people don't always report accurately. Uh, it doesn't include the fringe benefits. But when you even make those adjustments, there's, uh, there's definitely a... Uh, a spreading of the income distribution over time. Um, interestingly enough, um, that uh, a lot of that was in the in the 90s, and it, it in some sense it's halted. I'm not saying it's a good level, but it's halted because of uh, the turbulence in recent years. Because the very well off their their capital gains and other things declined. So just as a as a matter of, of again numbers, the um, Percentage of income earned by the top 1% uh, was 21.5% uh, in 2000. It's now about 20%. So it's down. But that's because we've had this crisis, and it may go back again. It may start rising, and I don't know. But it's definitely gone up a lot in the 70s, 80s, and, and 90s. Economists have all sorts of explanations. One is the uh, greater rewards to education in our high-tech world, and that's corroborated to some extent by other countries, which has seen this as well. So if you don't have the, learn the skills, which you need to use the good technology, your wages are not gonna rise, and they're not gonna rise as rapidly as others, so that causes a dispersion. Um, the, if you look at uh, tax rates, some people argue it's the changes in taxes, but the truth is when you look at before and after taxes, these spreads are very much the same. Um, in other words, the, the amount of redistribution that's in the system is about the same now as it was earlier when you take in all the loopholes and everything else into account. Mm -hmm. I, in terms of what to do about it, um, I think you've really got to understand it carefully, by the way, before we jump to conclusions. Um, some people argue it's because of the decline in, in the uh, power of labor unions, for example. That's an argument that's made. But when you look at what labor unions do, it's not clear that they do uh, uh, anything but like spread the distribution because they tend to get more for their members and less for others. So that's a spreading, if that's the truth. So, so you don't want to jump to conclusions. To me, the most important thing to do about this is deal with our education problem. And in, I'm not talking about college so much, otherwise I'd just look like another vested interest since I'm a college teacher. But I'm talking more about the K-12, and uh, in particular the uh, people in disadvantaged areas of our country, the cities. And I just think it's a real, um, I, mean, I, I didn't say much about it, but it's another tragedy, if you like, that we're not mm -hmm. dealing with enough. It's just, uh, it's, it's a big reason for that spread in the income distribution. Not so much the top 1%, yeah. uh, but really it's the, it's the lower end, which I think we should be very, very concerned about. And so education, that's another thing where I, I believe there's a lot more we could do in terms of applying those principles 